Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Brian. In this video, we're gonna destroy an object using forces. So up until now, we've just been using an object interacting with another object, but sometimes we're just not gonna have the ability to do that. And what we're gonna do sometimes is actually have forces control the way our fracture is gonna interact with the environment, or use a force in this case to actually destroy an object. It's actually really easy to do. And so to do this, what we're gonna do is just start a new geometry node here. So let's just go ahead and start with a geo node. And to kind of show how this is going to work, I'm just going to do a sphere. We're just going to keep this as simple as possible. Um, we're going to do a polygon mesh here. Let's do smooth here. And uh, what I want to do is grow this bad boy up, let's say three, just so we have a bigger uh, fracture to work with. I'm going to do an attribute wrangle here. Here's a neat little trick. Um, you can use the clip function here, but the problem with the clip um, sop is it will leave a big hole here on the bottom, which becomes a little bit of a nightmare to close up. So to fix this, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do a quick expression. If at p dot y is less than zero, uh, well, then we're going to say, hey, take uh, at p dot y and make it equal zero. And what that'll do is it will clip it to the origin on the y axis. Let's go ahead and set this up for fracture. And at this point, we know how to do this pretty well. So we're just doing ISO offset. We'll do 100 sampling divs. I'm going to do a scatter. And uh, for this one, we don't need a thousand. We're going to drop this down to 100. Uh, that's going to work really well. Let's do RBD material fracture for this one. And let's just go ahead. Uh, for this video, we're not going to worry too much about the constraints. I'm only going to really worry about the fracture itself. So let's go ahead and cook that. Ah, I forgot to uh, hit my input points. So we'll input points. And there we go. We have our points inputted now. We have this nice fracture. I'm not going to really worry too much about the detail just yet. I'm just going to show you guys this concept. Before we take this into uh, our DOPS, we've got to set this up, though. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here to the scatter. And I want to create some forces that we can use in our DOP network that will say d destroy this object this way. So to do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here and first things first, we're going to create a visualize attribute node. I'm going to color this black. This is not going to be our output, but it'll allow me to see what I'm doing. So to do this, we'll come over to the visualizers and we're going to put in V and I'm going to switch this to a marker and let's just do vector. There's no velocities yet, so we don't really know what's happening. Uh, but let's go ahead and set that up. So to do that, I'm going to do an attribute wrangle. And I'm going to use that trick that we have talked about in the past on this channel. If you haven't seen it yet, here it is. I'm going to create a point. And let's just go ahead and move this point up. Uh, well, we have, a, we have a circle that's three. So if I do 1.5, you'll see that the po this point is up here. See, it's better on the screen. There it is. Um, and then these points right here are right there. So I might want to go above 1.5 for this one. Let's just go ahead and do two. And I, I can use this point here now into the second input and write an expression for my normals. So we'll say a hey, at equals point, second input, which is one. We're going to take the position attribute and we only have that one point, so zero. And then I'm going to add it to the position of my wrangle here. Let's go and look at the normals. And you'll see that I'm getting these normals now going up in the upwards direction. Pretty cool. Um, and if I move this down, you'll see that the normals will go with the point. So um, I'll just keep it at three actually for now. And then the next step that I want to do is on the same wrangle node, let's go ahead and set our velocity vectors with that normal in mind. So we'll say add V equals at N. And now if I come down here, we'll turn these off. Now look at my visualize. There is my velocity attributes. Cool. Let's give this a little bit of noise. So to do that, what I like to do is do an attribute VOP. Throw that there. Let's dive in. Let's do a turbulent noise. We'll do position. Then I'm going to go ahead and just right click here. Go to Vex Fox options. We'll set input parameters. This will promote all your parameters up. And then what I want to do is I want to multiply that into the velocity. And if I throw this directly into velocity, you'll see that we start getting something weird happening here. Let's go up a level so we can play with it. And we'll go attribute bindings. And uh, what I like to do is we'll mess with the frequency a little bit. Let's say 10 by 10 by 10 just to get started. And we'll start an amplitude by of 10. And you'll see we have this nice uh, kind of variance in my uh, turbulence. And it's being multiplied to the original value. So I shouldn't be getting anything 
uh, negative because we don't have any negative values there. Let's go to five actually for now. We can always scale this up in our dot network. I'm gonna increase the roughness up. Uh, maybe it's a little bit more turbulence. Okay, we can lower this down to let's say three. There we go. So we have this happening for us now. And of course, we can always come and play with this. We can maybe do some offsets. Let's say 25, you know, 10, and maybe 13 here just to kind of play with it a little bit. I'm just throwing random numbers out. So if you guys are curious how I'm getting those numbers, I'm just making them up as I go. So we have this now. And uh, what I want to do, so I want to create a null. Uh, in between the attribute vom and my visualize. And we're going to go ahead and throw that in there. We'll call this out forces. Let's go ahead and work with our actual geometry. We're going to do an RBD configure. Um, because this is not a wall destruction or like a building on the ground, I'm not going to create an active group. We're just going to leave all of these active. So let's just go ahead and create a null here. I am going to work off the low res. We'll do out. Low res, the low res is identical right now to the high res, but this will allow me to come in and say, okay, let's start adding in some detail here. But uh, for right now, we'll just leave this on the low res. So uh, let's go ahead and just color these um, for my sanity. So there we go. And let's just start a dot network. Let's dive in. Let's go ahead and start with a rigid body solver. Let's go ahead and throw in gravity. I'm gonna throw in a merge node and let's throw in a ground plane. And I'm just gonna hit Shift R so that the priority is set properly. And let's do an RBD packed object. Put that in there. And let's go ahead and grab in my out low res. And if I were to hit play, nothing's gonna happen. Uh, I might actually start to fall down because uh, um, I don't have any glue. We actually didn't create any glue constraints for this one. There's no need for glue constraints. So um, that's not the purpose of this tutorial. But, I mean, we can write an expression that says, hey, keep these inactive until I tell you to activate them. But uh, let's go ahead and talk about how to import our forces. I'm going to create a pop, vop. And if you remember from some of our previous videos, you will remember that RBD is really just a simulation of points with these objects attached to these points. That's why we pack our objects. So, which means if I use a pop vop, I can play with those points and tell them, hey, I want you to do this. So I'm gonna wire this pop vop here into my pre-solve and let's dive in here. And to bring in our, um, if I use over this window to show you guys, to bring in my forces here, I can use something called a PC or a point cloud open. But before we do that, we actually have to set this up because the only way to bring a point cloud open is through our inputs. And right now, we don't have anything input here uh, because this is, a, this is a SOP right here and we're working in DOP. So to do that, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna click on the pop pop. I'm gonna come up here to the inputs and for input one, we're gonna set SOP. And then I can just click and drag this over or I can just navigate and find out forces. So what does this mean? In input one, I now have that forces information coming in. Let's go source it now using that point cloud open feature. So point cloud uh, open. So PC open is what I usually type in. It comes out right there. And I'm gonna take the position into position and then OP input one into file. Now, you're not going to be able to see what's actually happening here, um, but you just kind of have to trust the process on, one, on this. Uh, you'll be able to see the effects of this once we actually do the whole thing. Um, what I want to do next is I want to come over here to the search radius, and I want to promote this parameter, and I want to promote the number of points as well. Now, we can't just use this information outright, so we actually have to filter it. And in order to do that, you just type in PC filter, and you'll get this point cloud filter. And so we'll take the handle. And I wanna take the velocity. So if you come over here and you look, you'll notice that I have a velocity attribute here. I wanna take this one in. So let's just put in V. And I'm going to add it to the original velocities, which by the way, we don't have any. So um, it'll just be adding to zero. But if I were to come in and add any velocities, this is, uh, this is what would happen is it would add it here following this function. So let's go up a level and let's see what happens. Now, right now, um, only so much is happening because our search radius is set to 0.1. What does this mean? Well, if I come over here and we go up a level so I can show it to you guys, you'll see that each one of these points right here, and it's gonna make this easier for you guys to see. Let's do dark gray. 
Okay. Each one of these points right here um, will have a search radius. Right now, we're drawing 0.1 meters, which isn't very far. It's only about that far. And so it's searching for those, for points to manipulate. Uh, once, it, once that point goes outside of that radius, it's no longer being manipulated. No more velocity is being added. And so what we're actually getting is, uh, turn this off, is we're getting that, that force and those objects are now just falling down. So it's not really what we want to happen. So what I want is I'm going to come in here and I'm going to increase my search radius here to let's say 10. That's more than enough. And we're actually going to get those velocity directions kind of going out to multiple points. In fact, that might be too much. Let's say two. And you'll see we get this massive explosion now. But keep in mind, because my search radius is set to two, everything that's within that search radius, so if we go over here to show you guys, we'll go to front viewport. So this is one, this is two meters. So everything that comes within this bounding box essentially will be getting the velocity attribute. And so, and it's happening on every single frame. And so this is why it looks very extreme when I hit play. To show you this in action, these pieces right here that fall You'll see some pieces, there you go, there's one that's getting punted, they're getting punted because they get within that velocity field that we created. So we gotta have to create a little bit of a setup here where we have a little bit more control. To do that, I can enable and disable solvers by using this enable solver stop. This dot node here will allow me to actually write in keyframes. Uh, let's say I want this to be active on all frames, so all frames under, let's say three, just to get started. And you'll see that we get this nice little effect, but after frame three, the pieces are no longer animating. Let's go to a perspective view so we can see that better. It looks pretty cool. And that noise that we added before is really uh, coming into play here. We can do a couple things here. Um, I, can increase, uh, I can increase how this is working. I'm gonna do a parameter node here. Let's call this parameter node uh, force multiply and we'll do force multiply here. I'll start with the default value of one. So we'll do value here, value there, and then we'll do this into the add node. Okay. Now, right now, nothing's gonna change because one times one is the same. But let's say I give this a force of two, you'll see that we're starting to get more punch into our animation. You can use this technique here for pop sims. You can use it for uh, vellum grain sims. I, I use this to create emitters for explosions uh, for my volumes. Uh, so hopefully you find this trick very useful. Uh, play with it, see what you guys can get. And I would love to see some of your work here on this channel. Let me know what you guys think of this effect down below. If you like it, let me know. Please be sure to subscribe to this channel if you're not subscribed already. And remember, always be creating.